Hello everyone, this is Dr. Costa. Welcome to Station 5 Paces Podcast, Retinitis Pigmentosa. At first, let me give you some background information about retinitis pigmentosa. It primarily affects the peripheral retina, resulting in funnel vision or tunnel vision. The main features are night blindness, tunnel vision, and fundoscopy shows black bones, spicule shaped pigmentation in the peripheral retina, mottling of retinal pigment epithelium. The inheritance can be autosomal dominant, autosomal recessive, X-linked, or mitochondrial. Incidence is 1 in 4000 and symptoms begin from childhood to age 30. It is a progressive painless visual loss, so the patient eventually becomes blind. Currently, no cure is available, but we do have some visual aids to help the patients. Retinitis pigmentosa can be presented alone and can be associated with another syndrome. If it is associated with another syndrome, then we call it syndromic retinitis pigmentosa. Some of the common causes of syndromic retinitis pigmentosa are Usher syndrome, Refsum disease, Abita lipoproteinemia, Kearns Sayre syndrome, Bardet Biddle syndrome, or Lawrence Moon Bardet Biddle syndrome, Refsum disease, and Alport syndrome. Usher syndrome patients have hearing loss and loss of balance. Lawrence Moon Bardet Biddle syndrome patients have obesity, polydactyly, syndactyly, learning disability, subfertility or hypogonadism, diabetes mellitus, renal disease such as interstitial nephritis, dilated cardiomyopathy, renal failure, and hepatic fibrosis. Kearns Sayre syndrome patients present with ophthalmoplegia, sensorineural hearing loss, ataxia, and AV block or cardiac conduction defect. The features of A beta lipoproteinemia are failure to thrive, learning disability, steatoria, peripheral neuropathy, and cerebellar ataxia. Repsum disease patients have ataxia, anosmia, hearing loss arrhythmia, short metacarpals and metatarsals, sensory and motor neuropathy. Alport syndrome will be discussed in the glomerulonephritis chapter. When I was preparing for the PACES examination, I find it particularly very difficult to remember the features of syndromic retinitis pigmentosa separately. Therefore, my strategy was to remember a few of the key features which I will discuss subsequently. I have given you enough background information of retinitis pigmentosa. Now it's time to get back to our real exam scenario. You would have five minutes time outside the examination room. During that period you would receive a paper in which the scenario will be given. The typical scenario of retinitis pigmentosa can be a male patient or female patient. The patient can be quite young since it develops from the younger age or the patient can be middle aged or elderly. If the patient is not young then he or she would have more visual loss. The typical chip complaints of a retinitis pigmentosa case would be impaired night vision plus peripheral vision loss plus minus loss of visual acuity. With the sound of the bell, you should enter the examination room and your first task is sanitizing your hand and then introduce yourself to the patient. Hello, I'm Dr. XYZ. I'm one of the PACES candidates and I have been asked to take a short history of you and examine you. Can I have your consent? The patient would say yes and you would start taking the history. You should take a detailed history of vision loss because patients can mean many things when they tell you vision loss. So you should ask in details, what exactly do you mean by vision loss? Do you have any blurring of vision? If the patient says yes, then ask him or her about blurring of vision of near objects or distant objects. 
ask about color vision loss can you see the reds and greens in the traffic light ask about the night vision loss do you have delayed dark adaptation i mean do you bump on the objects when you enter a movie theater ask about peripheral vision loss do you bump on the objects when you walk on the pavement ask about which eye is affected is it one eye or both eyes is it same on both eyes ask about do you see any curtain falling down over your vision ask about if he or she has any double vision when you have established the exact pattern of vision loss you should ask about the onset of vision loss when exactly it started then progression is it increasing or decreasing or remaining the same is there any associated features is there any aggravating or relieving factors or is there any other symptom that is associated with the vision loss for example any headache watering of the eye grittiness of the eye or anything else sometimes it is a good idea to ask an open ended question like do you have any other symptoms to a station 5 case or surrogate because some of the cases are quite friendly and they would tell you a lot so that you can reach the diagnosis quite early on in my examination i also encountered a very friendly case and she told me a lot so i reached the diagnosis very fast next task is to exclude some of the other common causes of painless gradual visual loss so the common causes of painless vision loss are cataract age related macular degeneration diabetic retinopathy and optic neuritis to exclude cataract you can ask do you have any glare to exclude armd you can ask do you see any wavy lines do you have any difficulty reading to exclude diabetic retinopathy you can ask do you have any history of diabetes or do you take any medication for diabetes to have good glucose control to exclude optic neuritis you can ask about any headaches color vision loss blood center etc please be mindful that some of the drugs also causes vision loss such as amiodarone ethambutol tetracycline hydroxychloroquine steroid and sildenafil so take the relevant drug history please take a detailed family history because we know that genetic factors play a big role in retinitis pigmentosa then you should move forward to examine the patient please don't miss a bedside white stick hearing aid and visual aid then assess the visual acuity by using a snellen chart then assess the visual field and you would find the loss of peripheral vision you should also check pupil reaction and eye movement if there is any problem in eye movement then it may indicate ophthalmoplegia so your dd would include kern sear syndrome then do a fundoscopy you can find a pale optic disc and black dots on the retina especially in the peripheral locations don't miss a polydactyly or syndactyly if present then tell Lorenz Moon Bardet Biedl syndrome as one of your DDs then assess for cerebellar signs and peripheral neuropathy if cerebellar signs are present then one of the DD should be abita lipoproteinemia and if there is any sensory or motor neuropathy then one of the DDs can be Rebsam disease then to further establish the differentials ask him some direct questions in quick succession do you have any problem with your sense of smell any hearing loss any balance problem any problem in your water works or bowel motion any shortness of breath or racing or pacing of your heart any history of previous hospital admission any history of chronic disease any history of surgery before etc as always ask the patient about social occupational and financial history and if he needs any help then offer help don't forget to ask about smoking and alcoholism and if he or she gives you a positive history then offer smoking or alcohol cessation then take a minute to explain retinitis pigmentosa to the patient you can simply tell him i think you have 
an inherited cause of gradual vision loss called retinitis pigmentosa here the cells present in the back of your eyes gradually stop working unfortunately we do not have a cure for it at present but the research is going on fortunately we do have some visual aids and support groups i would refer you to our eye doctor he would do some further tests on your eyes perhaps some further imaging and other tests and then he would give you available treatments and refer you to our multidisciplinary team including our optometrist and support group you may need some genetic testing to establish the diagnosis and most importantly you have to inform dvla regarding your condition then ask about the concerns of the patient if he or she has any concerns answer those concerns finally finish your part with the patient and turn around and face the examiner and present your findings sequentially at the end of your presentation tell the list of your differentials some of the differentials of retinitis pigmentosa can be congenital rubella where you would find hearing loss microphthalmia low iq microcephaly and congenital cataract the other differentials can be syphilis vitamin a deficiency autoimmune retinopathy and congenital stationary night blindness if the examiner asks you what investigations are done to establish the diagnosis of retinitis pigmentosa you can tell that formal visual acuity and visual field testing color vision test retinal photography electroretinogram optical coherence tomography and genetic testing the examiners can ask you about the management of retinitis pigmentosa it is usually managed by a multidisciplinary team some of the treatments available are use of glasses magnifiers or telescopes some of the centers give long term vitamin a and it requires monitoring because vitamin a in high dose can cause some side effects